Right, hi guys and welcome to another episode of The Cruel Wall from the Singapore Grand Prix and as you were, it's it's night time here and I've got my light on so it might not look as good but it's because it was a night race. No it wasn't, I'm lying. It was actually because uh, I've been working, I've been busy doing loads of stuff and yes I did watch the race and I finally caught up with all the bits and pieces and the gossip and I thought right I'm gonna have to do it now. Uh, because a lot of people were asking me where it was because it wasn't up straight after the race like the last few have been. Unfortunately, it's just our work's fallen that I couldn't do it straight away. But I was going to save it until Wednesday, Thursday when I was off. But no, you guys have actually got me uh, to do it. You've persuaded me to do it earlier because the uh, demand for it was uh, so great. So without further ado, let's kick off with the race winner, Lewis Hamilton. After starting fifth on the grid... Uh, yeah, it looked like he was going to be uh, fairly well out of this, didn't he? Actually, let me stand over here. It looked like he was going to be fairly well out of the uh, championship contention. Looked like he could lose the lead um, to Sebastian Vettel after qualifying a poor fifth and Vettel was on pole. But yeah, after the first lap dramas, shall we say, I'm going to cover them later. I'm not going into them now. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, the first lap dramas certainly helped in his favour and he won the race. So what am I going to say about Hamilton? Well... Qualifying was obviously poor, but that's a car. The car's never been good round here anyway. Um, but yeah, for the actual performance of the race itself, he took the lead and he won the race, which is fair enough. Um, obviously, couldn't be happy with taking the lead all the time and still had to cry like a little bitch every time a safety car came out, which is just standard Hamilton. He's never happy unless he's moaning. So, unfortunate for him, that's going to knock him a few points off there. Especially for the third one where Ericsson was spun round on the tight part of the circuit and they had to get a recovery truck onto the circuit. And he was going, oh, couldn't you do this on the virtual safety car? Well, mate, if you want to drive yourself under a fucking truck like Jules Bianchi did, then be my guest, pal. Be my guest. Uh, I think you're a bit of a dick move, to be honest, to question safety. So, yeah, for Lewis Hamilton, uh, you are going to score... Seven points this weekend. Seven points for Lewis Hamilton, just for the fact that he cried like a little bitch over things that he shouldn't be bothered about. Uh, next up was Daniel Ricciardo, P2, after qualifying P3. Looked like the Red Bulls could be on pace this weekend and could actually do some good. Um, but unfortunately, Ricciardo found out he had a gearbox oil leak, which was causing him the issues and meant that he, had, he fell back from Hamilton because it looked like, obviously, Red Bulls were quicker than Red uh, than Mercedes this weekend. Uh, but Daniel Ricciardo had a solid race, obviously, um, out qualified by Max Verstappen, but nonetheless came through to finish P2. And obviously, if he was managing a gearbox issue, then fair play to him for doing that. Great race by Bottas, great race by Red Bull. Unfortunately, they missed out on the win this weekend, which I think they could have got and thoroughly did deserve. But Daniel Ricciardo, a strong race nonetheless, and I'm going to give you... Nine points. I think I'm going to give you nine points, just for the fact that you didn't out-qualify your teammate. Valtteri Bottas, P3, after qualifying P6 and was some way off his teammate in qualifying. And once again... Um, some way off his teammate in terms of race pace overall. Dropped down to sixth at one point in the race after recovering after the calamities again. And actually got overtaken by Jolian Palmer. Hmm. Street cred not very good there at all, Bottas, for that happening, I'm afraid. Um, so, yeah, Bottas outshone by your teammate all weekend once again. It should have easily been a 1 2, really, if Ricardo had his gearbox issues. But not to be, not to worry. Valtteri Bottas. Um, Six points this weekend. Disappointing in comparison to your teammate. But at least you didn't cry like a bitch. Anyway, uh, Carlos Sainz, my personal driver of the day with P4. Fantastic effort by Carlos there. A great strategy by the Toro Rosso team as well to put him on the Inters to start the race with. Quite a lot of the cars around him and ahead of him were on the full wets. So a great strategy by the Toro Rosso team certainly helped him. But Carlos's driving was amazing and brilliant. Perfect and his best ever finish in Formula 1. Heading to Renault next year, which is great to see. Uh, but yeah, good for Carlos to get a good result at last. Tis deserved. And he always proves that he is the better driver in that Toro Rosso car, and this proved it again today. And Carlos signs. I'm going to give you a whopping 12 points for that race, because I think you deserved it. You can score the amount of points you scored in the championship that race. 12 points for the team, 12 points for the cruel wall. Well done, friend. Uh, next up was Sergio Perez P5 for the Force Indies after a poor qualifying of P12 and P14 for them. 
Uh, Sergio Perez came through the field to finish P5. Now, great drive. 10 points on the board for Force India for that, for Perez. And 10 points for Perez, of course. Um, but yeah, they're still disqualified from the cruel wall. So, Sergio Perez, I'm afraid, uh, disqualified. I'm sorry. You shouldn't be hitting each other. It's not the, you know, I can't forgive you. I'm sorry. P6. Let me just have a breather. Let me have a minute. I don't know if I can do this, guys. I genuinely don't know if I can do this. I don't even know if to do the party poppers. I'm not going to do the party poppers. It was jolly off Palmer in P6, everyone. I know. I can't believe it. He scored points. He scored points. Eight. Eight of them. Eight of them. Eight points. And, well, jolly off Palmer, what can I do? What can I do, Palmer? I don't know what to do. I've never been in this situation before on the cruel wall where you actually score points. Oh, no. Well, I can't score him any points, can I? He's scored points in his real life now. He's not bothered about the cruel wall. So I'm going to just put... What, what have we got? Mong Wang Turd. Jolly off Palmer, you scored eight points. Sixth on the road. But really... Was it was it skilled? Really? Well, he did over Tech Bottas, didn't he? Shit. Do you know what? I'm gonna actually score in points. I'm gonna score in points. Are we ready? The first ever time. One. One point for Jolly Off Palmer there. Well done to him. Uh, next up was Van Dorn in P7 for the McLaren team. A great qualifying by them. Saw them both into the uh, top ten, and Van Dorn was the sole remaining McLaren. And finished P7. So, again, his best result in Formula 1, just like Joliath Palmer and Carlos Sainz. And Van Dorn certainly deserves full credit for that. Great qualifying, great race. Kept it clean, kept it tidy. Solid result. Well done to him. So, Stoffel Van Dorn, you can get 10 points. Well done to Van Dorn. Next up is Lance Stroll in P8. Uh, qualified 18th, I believe, gained 10 places. Um, and again, that wasn't just the accident, that was obviously coming through the field as well, because there's only three or four cars out ahead of him. Obviously there were some dickheads falling off as well later on in the race, but that really doesn't matter. Stroll did a great race, outraced Massa, who was on a shit strategy, it must be said. Um, but Stroll raced well, scored four points for the Williams team, and it looked like they weren't going to score points at all. So Lance Stroll, a good drive by you actually, and I'm going to give you an... I'm going to give you eight points. I think I think there's a lot of people done well this weekend. There's a lot done shit, but there's a lot done really well. Uh, P9, Roman Grosjean. Could have been more for Haas, I personally feel, but just shit, aren't they? They just can't get their act together. It's just erratic. It was really erratic in qualifying. The cow was off the pace, but then in the race it looked like they could get a double points finish. Then it looked like it had all gone tits up again, and... I really don't know where Haas are in the mo at the moment with the car and the development and stuff, and it's just all a bit strange. But Grosjean scored a couple of points nonetheless. Um, but it wasn't the most exciting of races for Grosjean. He was making a few mistakes in qualifying. In the race, he just kept it on the road, but wasn't really mixing it up like his teammate was, let's say. So a lonely, quiet race, as far as you can see, anyway, uh, for Roman Grosjean. But a solid race nonetheless. So I'm going to score you... Six points. I think I think you deserve six. Um, Esteban Ocon P10. Uh, really poor race by Ocon. Um, qualified 14th. Got up to... He was not really in the points, I don't think. Maybe early on he was. He got up to 8th, I think, at one stage. But his strategy wasn't the best. Um, and was running around in about 12th to 14th for most of the race. The couple of retirements ahead obviously led him to score the solitary point, especially with the late retirement from Hulkenberg. And that score, saw him score the points. Without that, he wouldn't have had points this weekend. But it doesn't matter anyway, because he can't score points on the crawl walk, because he's too busy to his teammate. So, disqualified, nothing. Uh, next up, Felipe Massa. Again, uh, Massa's strategy was horrible. Uh, went on extreme wets, then went on extreme wets again, I think, then inters, and then it was just shit. It was a shit strategy. And, um, you know... I think they learnt the mistake and put Stroll on a better strategy, but the damage had already been done for, uh, for Massa. Still gained a few places, of course, but then again, there was only 12 finishers. So, yeah, he was the last of the cars on the, on the lead lap, and, yeah, a, a bad race, really, for uh, Massa, but more to do with the strategy, I personally feel. So, Massa, you're going to get four points. Lonely race for you. 
Uh, Pascal Verlein was last of the finishers, P12 and two laps down. Again, Sauber. Could have been an opportunity for them to score points, but unfortunately, they um, really, really, really got it wrong with the strategy. They did extreme wets, pitted during the safety car for more extreme wets, then came in and put more extreme wets on, then went out on inters when the, when the track was virtually dry, then came in and put dries on, and it just led them to be two laps down. With the amount of safety cars, they could have been on the lead lap still, and still possibly scraping the points, but instead well out of the contention and fairly, fairly crap and dismal, to be honest with you. So, Pascal Verline, a really, really bad race for you, especially when you could have done so much better. So, uh, I'm going to score Pascal Verline, uh, only, only, only two, only two points. It was a bad race by him. Kevin Magnussen retired a late retirement due to a mechanical issue after quite a ballsy race, it must be said. Uh, did a great move on Ocon, a nice cheeky little lunge up the inside, almost put Ocon in the wall, but there wasn't any contact, it was good, clean, solid racing. Uh, nearly bounced it off the wall and then into Massa um, uh, on the back straight, the little kink on the uh, back straight, and did a great job to not actually end that in a big accident, and did a great job to get through. And then he made a mistake and dropped himself to the back of the pack after making all that effort and headway and then retired. So again, a mistake by Magnussen dropped him out of the points before his eventual retirement anyway. Um, strong showing by Magnussen, but still shows that he's inconsistent in terms of keeping it on the road. Um, some good overtakes nonetheless, and for that reason alone, I'm gonna score you four points. That's just for simply the overtakes, because at the end of the day, you did ruin your own race before the retirement. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg, um, another retirement of course, could could have been a podium for Nico Hulkenberg and now he holds the record for the longest uh, amount of races ran, 129 now, without a podium, so he overtakes Adrian Sutil and it could have been a race where he could have potentially had a podium, was running P3 at one stage, um, but not sure if the strategy was quite right that Renault did, but nonetheless he was running P5, then P4, and then, yeah, it just all went wrong, unfortunately. He had a, an issue where they had to top up, I think it was coolant, or certainly hydraulics anyway. Something mechanical anyway that meant he had to make an unscheduled pit stop and was in the pits for about 15 to 20 seconds just for that alone. Came back out, obviously, at the tail end of the field and then later on just pulled into the pits and retired. So a, a bad race for Olkenberg. What could have been a really, really solid weekend for him? He'd have been P4 at the very least. So, Nico Olkenberg... A few sympathy for points, I feel, and it's going to be six. Well, uh, maybe one sympathy point. Six points, anyway. Um, next up was Max Ericsson. Again, a shit race. Uh, before Ericsson retired, he'd done six pit stops, just for reference. That's how bad Sauber were with their strategy. He'd done six pit stops and he didn't even make the whole race. So, a bad race by Marcus Ericsson. Smacked it into the wall. Got stuck at the little... Uh, bridge tunnelly section, like a narrow channel area of the uh, circuit going into the hairpin and brought out a safety car and yeah, I mean Ericsson, you didn't really need to push that hard did you? You were two laps down, you were ahead of your teammate who was god knows how many laps behind you or whatever but either way it was a crap race by your Ericsson and for the just the fact that you damaged yourself I'm going to score you zero in fact have I got those the wrong way around? Yes I have there you go, that's I got them the wrong way around. It doesn't matter anyway, it's only two points and zero anyway. Uh, next up is Danny Kvyat. Uh, looked like he could score points and then just decided to plough it straight on into the wall. Got Did a good overtake and then just threw it off into the scenery like Danny Kvyat does. Uh, doesn't deserve a drive in Formula 1 next year for definite. I can guarantee that. I don't think he deserves a drive. Absolutely shite. And yeah, I'm going to score Danny Kvyat uh, minus... 47. Minus 47 for Danny Kavir, absolutely horseshit. Uh, then we come to the retirement as a result of the first lap incident. We of course have Alonso, who was taken out as purely as an innocent victim in the incident completely, had a rocket launch start and was in theory up to third at that turn one before he got bulldozed out of the way by a out of control Verstappen and Raikkonen. And yeah, completely innocent. Alonso did well to keep going and was running around for about 9 or 10 laps, I think, before the eventual retirement came into play uh, because there was just simply too much damage on the car. The side pod was ruined on the left-hand side. 
Uh, loads of things exposed and dangling down and it wasn't going to last, but a commendable job to carry on. Alonso has been incredibly unlucky this season, could have been a potential top five finish for him, I'm almost certain of that with the pace that that car had this weekend. And just for your sheer unluckiness, Alonso, and because I like it, and because I share a lot of sympathy with the drivers involved in this Turn 1 incident, I'm going to score you... I'm going to score you 20 points, Alonso, because I think you did a fantastic job. And I do hope you continue as with McLaren Renault next year. And, yeah, this was an unfortunate race for you. Not the team's fault for the first time this year, for surprisingly enough. Uh, next up was the golden boy, Ferrari's golden boy. Let's all praise him and hail him. Sebastian Vettel, well done, my friend. Um, you are Ferrari's lead driver in Formula One, and you treat the team like this. You de deliberately, deliberately turned across the path of Max Verstappen, um, you might not have been aware that Raikkonen was there, but what does that matter anyway? Because I think there was going to be contact nonetheless. What are you doing? You start to pull. This was the perfect opportunity to capitalise a shitload of points on Lewis Hamilton. And you fucked it up, my friend. You fucked it up for your Ferrari and for your fans. Sebastian Vettel, you want to be... You want to... Genuinely, you want to have a good look at yourself in the mirror after that incident because it was piss poor and pathetic. There was no need for it at all. No need at all. You've took it, taken out as well as yourself, three other cars from that race, one of them your teammate. So, you know, Ferrari's golden boy, it doesn't matter because it's not his fault anyway. It's got the status like he had at Red Bull, for Christ's sake, where he did it in, you know, Turkey in 2010 on Mark Webber, and Helmut went, I think it was Mark's fault. It's like, oh, go fuck yourself. And this is what they're doing again. Ferrari are deluded to blame Verstappen for the incident, but, you know, they're just trying to get a reaction out of it, I think. Um, but, yeah, either way... Either way, I'm really not interested. Um, but Vettel, you have literally lost any ounce of respect that I had left for you, which was probably about 0.3 after the Baku incident this year. And you've shown your true colours once again. But this time it's come and bit you back in the arse massively because you've lost the championship now. Guaranteed, this was your one race where you knew Mercedes would be slow. And you fucked it. And you fucked it for Ferrari. And... You just, do you know what? You just piss poor. I don't like Hamilton and I don't like Vettel. And, you know, I didn't really give a shit who won the championship this year, but I definitely don't want it to be you now, Vettel. I definitely don't want it to be you because that was fucking pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. You're a horse shit, my friend. You call yourself a Formula One driver when you're doing moves like that, deliberately knowing that there's a car there and still trying to squeeze him into the pit wall. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. So... What am I going to score him? I was going to score him many, 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 many minus points. But I didn't think that was just enough. I've disqualified my favourite team from this cruel wall because of stupid incidents like this. And Sebastian Vettel only deserves the word on the wall as well as a disqualification. So Vettel is going to be disqualified... And I'm simply just going to write all along here. I'm just going to write. I hope you can see that because I'm running out of room. But I've just written asshole. Get off the grid, Sebastian Vettel. You are an absolute twat. Uh, Max Verstappen, P2, missed out on pole. He was disappointed to miss out on pole, of course. And uh, let me just adjust my camera a bit there. There we go. Might be a bit better for you. Uh, but yeah. Max Verstappen missed out on pole, but not to worry. It would have been a great race. I think it would have taken the lead, potentially. Maybe Raikkonen would have got through, but it would have stayed second anyway. It would have been Vettel that would have been shuffled back at the start. I can guarantee that's why he did the move he did. Uh, but nonetheless, Max Verstappen, once again, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all, Max Verstappen. And it's a great shame because he could have really, really, really done well this weekend. Um, not his fault at all for the incident, as I've explained. I fully blamed Vettel for the incident. Verstappen was in the middle of the two, the two closing Red Bull, uh, two, two closing Ferraris, and he could do nothing. He could do nothing. Um, yeah, I'm just disappointed. I genuinely am disappointed for Max Verstappen, and I am disappointed for Red Bull as well. To be honest, as much as I hate Elmer Mark and I think he's a twat, I did want him to get a good result. I wanted Max Verstappen to get a good result this weekend. So Max Verstappen, you might not have scored points. 
many points in real life actually, but I think you're going to get more on the cruel wall this year. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you 20 points as well. I think I think everyone that got taken out by Max, by Sebastian Vettel deserves 20 points. Um, Kimi Raikkonen, the last one to be taken out, of course. And yes, I will score him 20 points as well. So I'll put that on now. Uh, but I'm just going to say now, a lot of people have been saying that it was both of the Ferraris squeezing Verstappen. And if you look on board Raikkonen's onboard footage, uh, he does stay left. Uh, he does stay left. If you follow the white line to mark the edge of the track on uh, Raikkonen's onboard, you can see that he is fully, fully, fully alongside that line and stays parallel to it. Does not move until the contact happens with Verstappen, because obviously Vettel's ploughed into the side of him. So, I mean, Raikkonen for me was an innocent victim. Some people might be blaming him, but at the end of the day, what does it matter? He was out of the race nonetheless. Um, so yeah, I mean, Raikkonen again, I really feel sorry for you. You are playing second can fiddle to this absolute arsehole of a teammate. And you're playing second fiddle to him, and you've agreed to do it for another season, you lost your win at Monaco because of this, and you could have overtaken him at Hungary, but you were told not to. You respected those team orders, and what does Vettel do? He repays you back by taking you out of the race, taking others out of the race, and costing Ferrari a lot of points in the constructors, which means that Mercedes have won it now, all but you know, pretty much guaranteed all but mathematically. The same with the Drivers' Championship. It costs it costs Raikkonen points as well. Let's not forget, Raikkonen isn't in the championship hunt, but you know he's fighting with teams and drivers around him, and it's it's just bullshit. It is utter bullshit. I'm so disappointed this weekend how it turned out. It could have been a great, 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 you know, exciting race, but instead it was just exciting for the first lap, and then it got shit boring afterwards because we knew what was happening. Um, It'd have been nice to see what you were capable of this race, Kimi. And yeah, unfortunately not. But there you go. So 20 points for Kimi Raikkonen on the board. And uh, yeah, that's that, unfortunately. A disappointing way to end the crawl wall, I know. Um, but there we go. Vettel, sort yourself out, mate. And yes, yeah, so that was the crawl wall, guys, from the Singapore Grand Prix. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope the night feature doesn't look a bit too shit either, but there we go. I'm running out of room on the crawl wall now. I might have to move it for the last few. I didn't expect it to go this long. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys, as always, and I will see you all again very, very soon. And thank you so, so much for the support with this series. It really means a lot that you guys were asking where it was just because it wasn't up ex immediately after the race. And yeah, it's because of work, nothing else. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Much love.